Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Joe with Smoky Joe's Play Barbecue. On today's video, I'm cooking two prime briskets on my Yoder flat top charcoal grill. Stay tuned. All right, welcome back. So as I mentioned in my introduction, I'm gonna be cooking up these two prime briskets on my Yoder flat top charcoal grill. And as far as I know, I don't think it's ever been done. In fact, there's very little videos of people cooking on YouTube on the Yoder flat top charcoal grill. So what prompted me to try these briskets on my Yoder flat top is last week, last weekend, I cooked some ribs on that Yoder flat top charcoal grill and the flavor was absolutely amazing. It's something that you would think came off of an offset smoker, the flavor anyway. So I know that that, that flat top's gonna do a good job on these briskets here. So I'm gonna call this a hybrid cook, okay? This is the kind of the, the twist to this video. So I know that the flat top, my Yoda flat top, isn't as insulated as an offset smoker or even my YS640. So I'm gonna cook these on my Yoda flat top until I get some nice color on them. At that point, I'm gonna transfer these briskets over to my YS640 pellet grill. So that's why I'm titling this video a hybrid brisket cook because half of it's gonna be on my charcoal grill, my Yoda flat top charcoal grill, and the other half is gonna be on my, on my uh, Yoda YS640 pellet grill. So very interesting cook, I know it's gonna work. So as far as the rubs, you guys know that I like to start with my garlic jalapeno seasonal. I almost dropped that, not sure if you guys caught that. But hopefully this doesn't make me sneeze or cough like it usually does. Just put a light, light coat of this garlic jalapeno, uh, garlic jalapeno seasonal. Whew. Strong stuff. Mm. Then do the, <coughs> excuse me, do the fat cap. Again, this stuff is pretty strong, guys. Um, I think some of the particles float up in the air a little bit, causing you to cough a little bit. <laughs> okay, just light coating. <coughs> Excuse me. On my second rub, I'm using a very secret rub um, that is not available to the public yet but it will be here pretty soon. And this is a, a rub that uh, we are working on developing. So I can't, it's not available, you can't buy it yet. But uh, this is a really good rub. It's got some really good pepper in it. Put enough of this rub on there, just like so. Get these sides. Okay, no binders or anything like that. It's got a good amount of pepper, got some good color, as you can see here. Okay, and then let's get that fat cap or the fat side. This brisket actually, I missed this. I'm gonna have to cut this off here a little bit. But uh, put a nice coating of this rub, and as you can see, it's got some really good pepper pieces in here. That's what a good Texas brisket has. A good amount of black pepper so this is going to go really good this isn't terribly uh, salty actually it's kind of light on the salt so feel free to use enough of this rub get your edges I got it. I'm just showing you guys this if you guys don't want to see this kind of fast forward this is how much rub I put on my brisket okay Push down, try not to rub so it doesn't clump up on you. Get the edges. All right, so that's about it guys. I'm gonna rub down the other brisket and I'll bring you guys outside and show you how I'm gonna set up my Yoder flat top, so stay tuned. All right, welcome back. We are outside of my Yoder flat top. Now I put a full basket of Kingsford blue charcoal, just a bed on the right side, maybe 30% of the charcoal basket that you see there. And then I put three splits of oak. This is post oak wood on top of that charcoal. And it's ready for me to move that grate over to the right side. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and move that grate over, close the lid, and try to maintain a temperature of 300 degrees, which isn't really hard to do. Once I establish that, I'm gonna go ahead and throw my briskets on. So I'll bring you guys back as soon as I put the briskets on, so stay tuned. 
All right, welcome back, guys. So I was able to maintain 300 degrees on my Inkbird thermometer there. Again, I got the probe on the grate there. As you can see, it's not touching the grate. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and shut the lid down. I did put the points of the briskets towards the fire, as you can see there. So I'm not worried about this uh, that point and burning. If it does get too dark um, here shortly, I will put some foil on the point to keep it from getting too dark. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and shut the lid down. I've got the intake on the bottom right hand side open a quarter of an inch. The left side is completely uh, closed. Once I close the lid, actually let me close the lid for you guys here. There you go. So just like that, I got the lid closed. Now I'm going to close the exhaust. All right, so I shut down the exhaust. It's only about a quarter of the way open. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. So at this point, I'm just going to let it go. Again, uh, main, try to maintain the temperature of 300 degrees. Uh, the thermometer does say 400, but because that's the... Uh, the wood was on fire as you can see it caught a good flame but once I shut the door down close the exhaust down to a quarter of an inch open uh, that flames gonna go away and I'm just gonna get some smoke out of it so we're gonna leave it like this I'm not gonna even open this for probably the next mm, hour and a half and I will be spritzing with apple cider vinegar and water mixed at 50 percent but probably not for maybe three hours or until my bark is set so I'll bring you guys back uh, say an hour and a half when I open it up so stay tuned all right, folks, welcome back. So it's been an hour and 30 minutes now, and the briskets are looking really good. The uh, fire over here is kind of tamed down. Uh, the temperature-wise uh, is right at 300 degrees, and it's not moving from that point. But I think as some of the um, coals burn down a little bit, uh, the temperature will come down to 275, maybe 250. Um, at that point, if the fire does die off, to the point where it drops uh, below 250, I will lift up the grate on the right side and uh, drop another split of wood. So this is what we look like at uh, the one and a half hour mark. Got some really nice color to it. And uh, you can see the point side is getting a little bit darker. Um, if that gets too dark, I'll probably slap a piece of foil on both ends of the point, but I'm not too concerned uh, yet. So we'll see you guys back in about another hour and a half. At that point, it'll be three hours, so stay tuned. All right, guys, welcome back. So the total cook time right now has been three hours, and these briskets are looking really good. The temperature, the pit temperature is at 279 and has been maintaining. So the temperature is starting to drop, uh, which I'm okay with. And again, the briskets are looking really nice. The bark is looking nice. I've already sprayed them with some of the apple cider vinegar and water. Uh, again, mixed at 50%. So... Um, I'm just going to let them roll. Uh, right now the brisket over here to the left side, internal temperature is 144 and the one on the back side there is 135 and again this one over here on the left is a little bit thicker um, but the internal temperature is about 9 degrees higher or so. So I'm going to let this run for probably, hmm, again I, it's hard to tell. I mean I'm getting a nice color now. Um, I, I just want a nice dark uh, bark and at that point I'm going to transfer them over to my pellet grill that you see over there on the back side and I will smoke them there it is I will smoke them at uh, probably 225 I can fit both of those briskets on the top shelf um, so overnight um, at 225 probably another hour and a half I'm really liking this color another hour and a half I should be at the color that I want um, I will bring you guys back at that point if the color is there if not I'll bring you guys back however long it takes, um, but I will fire up my pellet smoker when I feel I'm getting close. That way I can sleep overnight. So again, this is my hybrid cook. Half of the cooking time uh, will be on this flat top, and the rest of it's going to be done on the uh, Yoder Y640 pellet grill. So um, I'll bring you guys back if anything exciting happens, so stay tuned, guys. All right, guys, welcome back. So it is 2.30 in the morning. So the briskets, I just transferred them over to my pellet grill. So they smoked on the Yoder flat top for about five hours, exactly five hours actually. And um, I just transferred them over, got my pellet smoker. 
my YSX40 set at 250 degrees. It came down a little bit because I had the door open while I transferred it, but it was at 250. So I'm going to go ahead. Actually, let me show you this here. Look at that beautiful color. So I got some really nice color off of the Yoder flat top. And again, I was spraying with apple cider vinegar and water. It makes it 50%. So they're looking good. The fat cap is still on the top. Now, I should technically flip these over so the fat cap is on the bottom because my heat source is from the bottom. But at 250 degrees, I'm going to be okay. So again, it's 2.30 in the morning. Um, I'm probably going to let this roll. The internal temperature right now is uh, 153 on the brisket on the left, which was on the front on the flat top. And the one on the right is at 147. So I haven't even reached the stall point yet, so I'm thinking I, I can just let this ride for probably five hours. I got enough pellets in the hopper there, so I'm going to try to get at least five hours worth of sleep, and um, we'll be back in the morning. So I will uh, put the app on my phone from the Inkbird, so I can, I can monitor the temperature uh, just so I don't go too high, but I think I'm going to be okay. So. So this is what we look like after five hours. Uh, bark is really nice. Again, I have been spritzing with apple cider vinegar and water. So we're going to let this roll in the pellet smoker for five hours. So we'll see you guys in a bit. Stay tuned. All right, so we are at the nine hour mark now. And my brisket has the color that I want, so it's time to wrap it. Um, those of you guys that want to know the internal temperature, it's 175. The one that's still in my uh, Yoder Y640, that internal temperature is 160. 169 so 170 as well so what I do to wrap is is I use some Cosmos cube brisket mop and um, let me show you guys how I wrap this so check this out Just a very simple wrap. Again, I use the Cosmos Q even if I'm using butcher paper, and uh, it will not leak through this butcher paper. So, so again, guys, we're at the nine hour mark. I am very impressed on how this brisket looks. And again, I would challenge you to, to tell me that this wasn't cooked in an offset smoker. Uh, that Yoda flat top did an amazing job. Then I put it at the, uh, the five hour mark. I put in the uh, YS640 pellet grill and that just kind of finished off that bark and looks amazing so I'm going to leave them in there until the internal temperature gets to at least 200 degrees and at that point I'm going to let them rest for two hours before I even slice into these so I will bring you guys back and let you guys know exactly how long it took so stay tuned guys alright welcome back so the briskets are ready and um, the color on them when I wrapped them guys was, was pretty darn good again it looked like something I had cooked in an offset um, this brisket here took 13 and a half hours um, and this is the more narrow brisket the one that's for my catering gig that one took 14 and a half hours because I think it was a little bit bigger a little bit thicker and a little bit wider um, and it was it was a little heavier too so it, was, it started off as a 14 and a half pound this one was exactly at 14 pounds so that may have been the difference on why it took a little bit longer so I want to again this is the first time that I unwrap this this has been in my Cambro uh, cooler for Two and a half hours, and uh, it's probably still going to be pretty hot. But we'll check it out here. Here we go. Look at this bad boy. Oh man, still has some great color to it. Got some juice there, a little bit of juice, not too much. So remember how I said um, when I was trimming this, if you guys watched that video, 
Um, this is the fat cap or the fat side up and that's how it smoked. It's got some really nice stark uh, color. It's still very jiggly. So what I like to do is I like to flip my brisket over and see which way the, the grains are running. So the grains are running this way. So again, a lot of people cut into the brisket. I don't like to do that. Just kind of flip it over. So I'm going to get a couple of slices from this and we'll see what it looks like here. Actually, I'm going to start right here. off of this so the hang test is really good right now it is a little bit on the dry side not not terrible okay not terrible but it's not as juicy as some of my other briskets and I, I and I think it's because when I did my when I started the cook on the flat top the temperature was really high like at 350 degrees but I was okay with that and the, and the temperature actually came down to 275 but the hang test is still really good, as you can see. It's still moist, but not as moist as some of my, some of the primes that I've cooked. So I'm just gonna slice it here. Again, this is my point. Then turn your point one way. This is the money shot that everybody likes to do. So still really moist, as you can see, it's dripping juices. Okay. Not a whole lot of uh, smoke ring, and I, I believe it's because of the, um, well, I got a little bit of a smoke ring. I don't want to say no smoke ring, but I do have a smoke ring. The pull test, man, it's coming apart just by itself. So it pulls apart really nice and neat. Grab another slice. Again, pull test is really good, and it does have a, a smoke ring, just not as pronounced as if you were to do it 100% on an offset or 100% on the pellet grill either. So, guys, I'm going to get a couple of slices. We're going to back the camera up and give this a taste. Stay tuned. All right, welcome back. So, I've got the brisket sliced up and I've got some of the flat and some of the point. I got to tell you, the bark on this brisket, I've never, I mean, I've cooked some pretty good briskets. My El Rey smoker actually produced some really good uh, bark on my briskets. But look at this. If you guys can make that out look at that bark on that brisket and it's on the on the point and the flat so I'm gonna give this a, a taste and see what I think just gonna grab this slice again the the hang test is pretty darn good okay still a little juicy look at that so I'm gonna give this a taste cheers mmm that rub Good smoky flavor from the oak. Mm, mm, mm. Man, that rub on the outside with the garlic jalapeno and that rub that I'm working on, really amazing flavor. The brisket tastes absolutely wonderful. I'm going to grab some of this point as well. Let's just grab a and the fat rendered nicely, guys. Look at this. That's what you want. Your fat seemed to be kind of like spider webby, if you will. So just grab some of this uh, some of this point meat that's really juicy. Get some of that bark on there. Hmm. <laughs> wow. Hmm. Guys, that is tasty. That is really tasty. Look at this. Look at how, how moist and tender this is. Man. That Yoder flat top, this hybrid cook, absolutely worked. Again, I cooked it for about five hours on my Yoder flat top just to give it that good heavy smoke, which it has. Transferred it over to my pellet grill. 
until I had the my Y640 pellet grill, until it had that nice dark bark that I've got now. And at that point I wrapped it, used some of the Cosmos Q brisket mop, and let it go until 200 degrees, pulled it, let it rest for two hours. This is what I came up with. So hope you guys like this video. Again, I think I'm the first one to cook a brisket on the Yoda flat top. Not entirely. That's why I'm calling this a hybrid cook because I did transfer it over to my pellet grill. So hope you like this video. Subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up. Ask any questions. Until next time, Joe Smoky Joe's Pit Barbecue. See you guys.